Our mental health and addictive disease experts are alarmed by the latest trend of drug abuse among the youth in the country. Fresh revelations made by the Narcotics Control Board shows some young people are taken to smoking of dried feces. The Upper West Regional Commander of the Narcotics Control Board, Ishak Bukhari, revealed this during a visit by the Interior Minister. He said some youth also drink drained liquids from used female sanitary parts. We'll hear from the Mental Health, Health Authority and other experts shortly on this. But first, the following report by correspondent Rafiq Salam may be disturbing to sensitive uh, viewers. Discretion is advised. According to the Upper West Regional Commander of the Narcotics Control Board, Isaac Bokuri, they undertook 39 educative programs in the region covering about 7,000 people. He disclosed to the Interior Minister, Ambrose Derry, new shocking trend of substance abuse emerging in the Upper West Region and the country at large. Some youth in the country in their desperate search for vitality over the years have been pushed into consuming poisonous substances, including various kinds of glue, turpentine, and petrol. But the latest discovery, according to Isaac Bakuri, will make any right-thinking person in the country cring. People are now smoking poo, -poo. <laughs> Shit. They mix the dry shit with marijuana, and according to them, it improves the flavor. <laughs> And there are others who smoke only the dry poop. They pick the dry poop and they roll it and, and smoke. So, there is even another worry development, which is the use of the pad, which our sisters use when they are menstruating. Now, the youth go to buy the pad. We are still trying to discover the <coughs> chemical composition that is in, in the pad. They will boil the pad, seed it, and drink it. <coughs> and others who are unable to buy new pads, they left around in the backyards when the ladies remove it and throw it away, they take it, go and boil it, sieve it, and drink. The Arab stated that they are unable to fight it because there's no legal regime covering the latest craze among the youth. Now the youth have moved ahead. But this is also an area that we do not have a legal regime covering it. So apart from education and sensitization, it has become very difficult to enforce any laws against uh, the use of these substances. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry, however, allayed the fears of the Upper West Commander of NACOP. And so you appear to be at your wit's end. I don't think you should worry. His Excellency, the President has established a cabinet subcommittee chaired by a very prominent person from the civil society which is dealing with drug matters. We have tramadol and others that are now under the law, and therefore I will encourage you and invite you to make a presentation before that committee that will enable them to come out with recommendation that will be comprehensive. The Interior Minister later met with personnel of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, in the Upper West Region. When you do find that structures are in places that are likely to cause floods first of all let your dcs or mcs know about it and the icc and let the police know about it if need be we move them out before the flood we're not going to allow them to stay there and die and then we go around giving buckets and blankets to their dependents. reporting for the news rafik salam Wa. While well, head of addictive diseases uh, psychiatric unit at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Logosu Amegashi is shocked by the revelation. He told Mamavi Oswa Bwaji on the AM show here on the Join His Channel, there must be some probe into this. Just like a doc is talking about, the media must have like providing this. And, and in fact, you need money to 
always be Absolutely. doing marketing uh, our education. Mm. Uh, from the parental point of view, I think schools are now virtually run by PTAs, Parent Teachers Associations. When we have times that we go meet this group and we educate them, it will actually lessen their anxiety and their shock when these things start to happen. But how many parents actually attend the PTA meetings? These days there are rules. They are attending because mm. the attendance is there. They are attending. In fact, in my old school, and uh, where my children are now, they, they are attending. At least if they don't attend, they will have, they will, they will have some information on, okay. on this thing. It, it could be done if the interaction with parents is improved so that the first call should not necessarily be to the pastors. The pastors are there. As human beings, we need spiritual uh, uh, uplifting. Uh, and we need spiritual healing, too. Healing, too. So we can't rule out completely, but you give to Caesar for the Caesars. So when it's drug addiction, the professionals are there. You could back it up with your prayers or whatever. Mm. Whatever. So the so, so what's your call? It shouldn't be the first. Your first point of call shouldn't be if, church. If, not necessarily. Pastors can also help. If a student is a congregant, one of the congregants of a particular church, and he feels, he feels comfortable communicating this to a pastor, my call is that a pastor after praying must get him or her referred to the addition professionals. Okay. Because we have had instances where these people are even sent to camps. Well, for the Chief Executive Officer of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesiose, a comprehensive education program could be, could be used to save many more young people from this destruction. But one intervention is not enough. You need to combine various interventions. So as we are decriminalizing, we are also establishing, we need to establish the facilities, we need to train the personnel, and this is what Mr. Legos is talking about. So we need to put all together. If you look at them as exclusive, one, no one approach is enough. No one approach is enough. We need to put them all together. All until recently, Gavin's efforts have all been towards uh, what we call reducing the supply availability, supply reduction. And that is by punishing people who do it, uh, uh, making sure that you don't have it on the market, and destroying all that is only one aspect. We need to complement it with the reduction in the demand. Somebody recognizes that it may be there, but I don't need it, so I won't go for that. And these are the various components of the demand reduction. The education, the uh, get, recognizing that they have an illness and treating them, and their rehab centers, a lot of them. We need to have a collective plan and support, then we can get there. Mm -hmm. We are not doing badly. We are nowhere near what the situation of addiction is in America, the Colombia, and whatnot. But you don't want to get it in here because if you get there, you won't have the resources to deal with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's not among the 73 specifically trained in addiction management, then he can afford you. So any, any health facility, you can always approach that health facility, and eventually you will be awarded to where you can get your definitive treatment. That is mm -hmm. what. Uh, somebody also talked about other kinds of preparations that are being used. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the experimentation. Once you start with something, they get to a certain point, the high they get is not enough that they want to try other things. So they will experiment anything, and somebody said, as an addict, will do anything. So that experimentation is at the bottom of it or that we need to make sure that we break the desire for, um, for, for drugs, for anything that gives them high, so that they will stay away from that. Mm. Dr. Kwesiose is speaking to Mamavi Uswabwadi earlier today on the AM show. This is the Pulse with Megitian Dwapa.